by your Supposed Amendment, which in either case shall be valid to all uh, intents and purposes as part of this Constitution when ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states. Three-quarters, 75 percent. Remember, why did Madison give us this? Because he said, well, the law needs to change, but it shouldn't change for light and transient causes or the law becomes useless, right? And he said, even the people are subject to faction. And so they made this tough to prevent the people from their own best intentions. Because we, what do we know about best intentions? It paves the road to hell, doesn't it? Okay, two-thirds of the service shall call a convention for proposing amendments, which in either case shall be valid to all intents and purposes as part of the Constitution when ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states or by conventions in three-fourths thereof as the one or the other mode of ratification may be proposed by the Congress, provided that no amendment which may be made prior to the year 1808 shall in any manner affect the first and fourth clauses in the ninth section of the first article, and that no state without its consent <coughs> shall be de uh, deprived of its equal suffrage in the Senate. Remember when I said slavery was a British institution and not an American institution? And I always cite Article 1, Section 9, Clause 1, and I get a whole bunch of people that usually either have a BSers degree or got their more of the same or they're piled higher and deeper always go, well, you don't know what you're talking about, you're wrong. Okay, then why is it here then too? <laughs> Congress failed to do its job in 1809. And should that shock anybody? Because Congress is failing to do its job in 2023. Article 6, Section 1, Clause 1. All debts contracted and engagements entered into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be as valid against the United States under this Constitution as under the Confederation. Why do you think that was true? Why do you think they put that in there? We owed $7 million to France. Right? After, after the Battle of Trenton, Franklin was very instrumental in getting the French to go ahead and throw in and help us. We owed them $7 million. If we didn't pay that, because see, under the Articles of Confederation, states would borrow and do things, and then before they had to pay it back another state, they'd just change the money. This is one of the problems in the Articles of Confederation. Well, if France is going, hey, 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 we heard they're doing this new thing over there. Are we going to get paid? Yes, you'll get paid because it's, it's, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to continue with those obligations. That's all this was. We're going to continue with the obligation. Artic uh, Article six, section one, clause two. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite ones. I quote this one all the time, don't I, Jody? Mm -hmm. This Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof, very key term, pursuance thereof, means in spirit and form the same, but not word for word, but it has to be in spirit and form the same. So this Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof, in spirit and form, and all treaties made, or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land. Nowhere does that say that federal law is the supreme law of the land, does it? It says the federal Constitution and anything else that's made in pursuance thereof. So it has to be in spirit and form the same, to be as supreme as the supreme law, right? Let's go on. And the judges uh, in every state shall be bound thereby and anything in the constitution or laws of any state to the contrary, notwithstanding. Notwithstanding is another legal term. 
If you ever go to a, to a, to a lawyer and go, I want to sue so-and-so because they hurt my feelings, they're going to say, well, I'm sorry, you don't have any standing. So that makes you not withstanding. It means you have no authority. You have no case. It means without authority. So let's read that a little closer. It says, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby. Bound by what? This constitution. And anything in the contrary in the constitutions of the states or any legislature that has signed law in any state that is contrary to, so if the Indiana state constitution is contrary in any place to the federal constitution, it, ha it is void. It has no authority. And any law signed by the legislature in Indiana that is contrary to the federal constitution is void. Doesn't matter that they signed it. Doesn't make it a law. It's void. This is in 1803, John Marshall, that we still use this test today in the Supreme Court. And under the Mulberry versus Madison case, he said anything that's repugnant to the Constitution is void. And all judges and every department are bound by that instrument. What do, what do you think he was quoting? Right there, Article 1, Section, uh, or I'm sorry, Article 6, Section 1, Clause 2. The last half of that is exactly what he was quoting. Now notice he said, and all judges and every department are bound, limited, bound by that document. Nowhere did he say that the people are bound by that document. We the people are freed by that document because the government is bound by that document. Plain English right there. What with 218 votes? No, you're not with 218 <laughs> votes. Article 6, Section 1, Clause 3. This is the oath of office. The senators and representatives before mentioned, and the members of the several state legislatures, and all executive and judicial officers, both of the United States and of the several states shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this constitution, but no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. We're having a little trouble with this in Michigan right now. We're getting some religious zealots going, well, we don't want them because they're not this. And if you remember, during the time when Kennedy was coming in, people went, well, he's Catholic. I'm sorry, do you not know the Constitution? I don't care what he is. There shall be no religious test. We're supposed to be judged on our character, not our religion. Period. There's a reason for that. Absolutely reason for that. And if you studied the 700 years with me, you'll understand why. That's right. And notice it says to support this constitution. And it says the judges are supposed to take that oath. It doesn't say anything about interpreting the law, does it? because it's already been interpreted in 85 of the Federalist Papers. All they have to do is take the time to use their fifth grade skill set and read. Article 7, Section 1, Ratification of the Constitution. The ratification of the, con of the conventions of nine states shall be sufficient for the establishment of this Constitution between the states, so ratify the same. Now they knew to have to have um, uh, to have the le to have the Constitution be legal, they had to have nine out of thirteen states. So they really didn't need New York, did they? Federalist Papers to the people of the state of New York. But there's something there's something that our founders knew. 
for it to be truly positive law, they needed to have all 13 states. They didn't want just legal law. They wanted positive law. And that's why they worked so hard and wrote the 85 Federalist Papers to explain every article, section, and clause in detail with the principles backing it up. And once you, and the people they were talking to understood the 700 years of history, we're the only generation that does it. So they understood on history the principles and why each article, section, and clause was done. The why behind the what. This is the what. You have to understand the why. If without understanding the principles of what this says, there's absolutely no way you can understand this in its fullest. This is just kind of a quick outline of the Constitution. It's a good quick reference guide to have. Um, you can find them a lot of different places, but it's always good to have this little quick reference guide. Because I had somebody telling me one time, well, it says so in Article 13, Section, I was like, well, first off, you're an idiot. <laughs> What? Yeah, there's, there's only seven articles, dude. <laughs> Back up. <laughs> you're, you're, you're spreading fallacy here. Uh, but you'll, you'll catch people doing that all the time. Oh, they'll go, oh, it's, in, it's, in, uh, it's, in that, uh, it's in that third article, uh, section eight. Oh, there's not a section eight in the third article. <laughs> so what are you talking about, right? It's always good to have this. Because the other thing is, if you've got a question about something, you don't have to read the whole Constitution all over again to find it. You can look at this and go, okay, uh, it's about, uh, uh, so it's uh, Article uh, uh, Article 1, Section 7, Clause 2, the approval of the President. So we can look that up. It's easy to, if you've got the subject matter, you know quickly where to go and read it word for word. I would suggest have some of these made up Run them through one of those little things that makes it into a plastic thing. Put it in a package, wrap it up all real nice, put a bow on it, and send it to your congressman for Christmas. <laughs> along with one of the pocket constitutions. <laughs> Best present you'll ever give. Mm -hmm. and so this goes through the rest of it here. I'll just leave it up a little bit so people can see. So if you look at this, you're going to see how Article 1 is, is a huge part of the Constitution. Then the rest of it's like, bloop, bloop, bloop. So I get that all the time. People go, do you read it? Oh, John, I got, Bob, I got down to so, such and such in Article 1. And, oh, my gosh. It was just, man, you had 10 more minutes of reading. You had it done. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Article 1 is the largest part of it. It's not that bad. Once you got that far, you almost had it licked. Although Biden wants to lick the world. But <laughs> I'm just saying you should. Literally. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get us banned from YouTube. <laughs> you know how sensitive they are up there. So. Next time somebody says, did you read the Constitution? You can go, yep. Read the Constitution. Read the five genealogical documents that our founders used to write the founding documents. Studied the 700 years of history. Thereabouts, starting in 1040 with the common law. Read the Declaration of Independence. Huh? Yeah. Read the, well, we did 10, 10 of the Federalist Papers. There was 10, 10 out of 85 we did. But I would encourage you to do the other 75. They're not that bad. They're pretty interesting now that you understand this. When you start reading it, you're going to go, oh, yeah. <laughs> that 
that makes a lot of sense. So when people ask you that, you can go, yeah. The beautiful thing is next time there's a town hall, run your elected officials through their paces. Ask them questions. See if they understand the principles. That's the fun thing to do. And you too will not be invited anywhere else again. <laughs> <laughs> so, any other comments, concerns, criticisms? If not, the next six weeks, please don't miss. You'll love every one. It'll be the six videos of the John Birch Society called The Constitution is the Solution. It's gonna take everything that we just learned, everything from 1040 all the way up through the signing of the Constitution, all those principles, everything that was done. And the question that you've got in your mind, how did we get so far away from something so good this is going to take the 20th century and into the 21st century and it's going to put it into a little box, a little bow, and you're going to look, look at it and it's going to be based on all of what we've just learned. And when you look at it and you see it, you're going to go, holy cow, that happened right in front of me. Okay? So don't miss the next six weeks. You'll love it. Thanks for coming tonight, everybody. Be careful on the way home. Don't forget to turn your, your phasers to kill. We come in peace.